So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the head straight position. Mm -hmm. Now, the head straight position is a position you can use when you're working with a dog to earn leadership, to maintain leadership, um, to give a correction, to reassure the dog that nothing bad is going to happen, that you're in control, I got this type thing. Um, this is something that it's going to be a, a super valuable tool, but like any tool, if you don't use the tool, it's not going to be that valuable. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you incorporate this into everyday life. When I'm putting this flat link collar onto this dog, I'm going to hold it in my right hand and I have the chain coming down, which is attached to the, to the actual leash. And this is called the tag end. And this ring is right here on the end of the collar. And as you can see, the tag end is going down through that ring. Now, if I put it on the dog like this over the dog's head, when I pull on this and it closes, it releases also. But if I put it the other way accidentally, where it's going to, and it's kind of awkward to do this, but if the tag end is coming mm -hmm. up through that ring and I put this mm -hmm. on the dog, anytime I close this onto the dog, yeah, just... it stays there and chokes the dog. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to mm -hmm. do that. Okay, now when I put this on correctly, there's a couple of reasons why this mm -hmm. position is so effective. I want you to imagine that a puppy is being rambunctious and mom or dad or whoever is getting fed up with this little puppy just being wild and crazy and biting with those needle sharp teeth. So they're going to make a correction. Now the correction they would make is they would take their muzzle and put it anywhere from the occipital region, the back where the neck attaches to the head, down the neck, over the withers, the, the back, the loin, the croup, that whole area is a correcting zone. So people say, well, you have to have the collar up high like this. Well, you do not. Because this whole zone here, this is an area where they would correct. Now, they're more apt to actually correct right here where the neck is at. Mm -hmm. So if a dog was going to correct this dog for doing something wrong, they would growl. <laughs> would take their, mu their muzzle mm -hmm. and put it over this neck right here or anywhere in this region and put some pressure on it saying knock it off. It's not an emotional thing. It's not a bad thing. It is they're teaching the dog boundaries and rules mm -hmm. and, and, and being respectful. Mm -hmm. So here how we're going to duplicate that is that when this collar is on this dog you can see that that ring is attached right here. Now that's gonna be a very important thing that we put right on the side of the neck, just like this. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna take our right hand, and if we were to look at our right hand, where we're looking at all the lines in our fingers and our palm, we're gonna slide this underneath this chain so that these two fingers next to our pinky are right underneath where that ring is at. Mm -hmm. So our palm is facing up towards the sky, and it's our right hand. Now we're gonna take the pinky, and the pinky is now going to go over this tag end. And we're gonna close these three fingers together. So now we're holding this, and this part is not slipping. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to be longer, but not okay to be shorter. Now I want to place my thumb, now notice I'm gonna let up some pressure on my pinky, and I'm gonna let the chain slide. As it's sliding, it's going to allow me to get my thumb and my forefinger out to the end of this muzzle like this. I don't want my fingers back here in the beginning because I have more control of this dog mm -hmm. right here. Later on, when the dog knows what this is, that's not that big of an issue. But in the beginning, I want to be able to let off pressure with my pinky to let my hand slide out to the end of this muzzle. Now, all the pressure is on the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. None of the pressure is on the throat. 
So what happens is when this dog starts to fight you, it's moving its muzzle around, mm -hmm. or a judge is coming and you want to reassure them that, hey, I've got this, you can pull these three fingers forward and that puts pressure on the back of the neck without putting pressure on the, the throat. Mm -hmm. Now what you see in the ring is this, that has nothing to do with a correction of what the dog understands is a correction. This also disrespects the dog because imagine somebody coming up to you and grabbing you by your throat. That would not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now let's add a perfect stranger approaching and you're gonna pull tight like this, you're adding yeah, so yeah. much pressure yeah. to this dog. But people see people do this in the ring, so they keep doing this, and it's not effective, especially with a dog with primitive instincts that is with breeding old bloodlines because they don't wanna be in the ring in the first place. You haven't given them a reason to want to be in mm -hmm. that ring. So here, we wanna make sure we never disrespect the dog by doing this. Now, once a dog's fully trained, we can go into this head straight position like this. Head straight, head straight. And if we want, we still have our fingers underneath here like that. So I can come up and present this headpiece like this, but now there's no pressure on the bottom of that neck. So this looks like a conventional way to present a dog's head, but you're not disrespecting the dog mm -hmm. when you do that, mm -hmm. okay? So now, let me tell you a little bit more about the actual position. So the head straight position, head straight, head straight. Now, if you have the mindset that your dog doesn't like this, guess what? He's not gonna like it. He's not gonna like it. But if you have in your head that this is a valuable tool that you and the dog have to perfect, then your dog is going to start to learn how to get comfortable with this. Now, we're gonna help them get comfortable by, with this by doing the head straight, and then we're gonna massage the head. The head on a dog with really primitive instincts is a very sensitive part that they don't normally want touched. Mm -hmm. So you're going to desensitize. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get them used to this. You're gonna massage their ears, you're gonna massage their muzzle, you're gonna mm -hmm. massage their neck, all these long bones mm -hmm. here, massage the leg, massage the feet, massage the top line. They really like it when you put two fingers on each side of the spine mm. and gently rub like mm. this. That's a nice little massage right okay. there. So you're just gonna spend some time desensitizing mm. this dog mm -hmm. and massaging, head straight mm. every once in a while. But if the dog does start to fight you, and they usually will, usually they'll fight you in the beginning and then as they start to get comfortable with this, they'll give you a final test and throw the kitchen sink in and start fighting like crazy. Sometimes they'll even throw themselves on the ground. But you're going to just head straight, head straight, and if that muzzle comes up, you're gonna take your left hand and you can help bring that muzzle down while you're pulling forward with your right hand to do the head straight. Now, the muzzle coming up is dog language. And what is it it's saying? that you can't make me do anything in this area. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually at a show, you have no control of the muzzle when you're like this. And you'll see some people where they just have treats in their hands and that doesn't teach the dog anything. But if this dog puts its muzzle up when a, when a judge is approaching, you have no way to fix it from this position right here. If you're in this position and that dog puts its muzzle up, if you address it, you'll say, ah, head straight, say I use the vocal command and the head straight command, I'm telling the dog, I got this, you don't have to worry about a thing. If the dog gets away with this and a judge comes, they're gonna either move their feet or they're gonna back away mm -hmm. and rack back. So this prevents all that from happening. The head straight position is super important, but you have to do it just like I'm showing you right here. So the key is bring your energy down. Okay. Ah, ah, good, ah, good. Bring it down, stand. So I'm gonna push at the stifle to get him to stand. Head straight, good job, good job. Get that energy nice, good, ah, stand. Good, good, there it is, 
Good. Head straight. Ah, 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 ah. Head straight. Good. Ah. Good. Ah. Good. You're spoiled. Good. There you go. Ah. Good. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. Good. Ah. So he's, he's testing a stinker. me. He is a stinker. Head straight. Good. Ah. Stand. Good. So I don't really care where his feet are right now. Ah. I just want him to behave. Good. Ah. 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 There we go. You want to sit? Okay, go ahead and sit. But you're going to keep your head straight. Ah. See how he's working his head more now? Good, good, good. There we go. As long as you stay still, you get nice massages. Good. He's going to sleep. Good. Very nice. I got this. Good. Very nice. Good. That was good. Yes, it was. That was fantastic. So they're going to fight you. They're going to sit okay. there and try to put in the kitchen sink and all that stuff. But what you need to do is stand your, to your, stand your ground. Okay. Head straight. Good. Ah! Head straight. Good. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Get that muzzle down. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. Yay, that was so good. That was fantastic. Yes, it was a fantastic. Little baby steps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back. Ah! Ah! Head straight. Head straight. Ah! Head straight. Very good. Ah! Head straight. Head straight. Good. Good. Very nice. So the pressure from the collar is ah, on the back of that neck. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Yay! That was good again. That was fantastic. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. That was so good. So little baby steps. And then later when he's standing, then you work it a little bit more and a little bit more. But here's the situation with most people. Most people will say, he doesn't like the head straight. He stops wagging his tail. He fights me. He is not happy. He puts his paw on me. Thank you for that demonstration. They're going to do all those things. But they're doing it because they're smart. They're doing it because they want you to stop. But once they learn, ah, 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 head straight. And I'm using both. Ah, head straight. Good. Ah. Head straight. Good. Very good. That feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. And as long as you're good, that's what you're going to get. Good job. Good job. Yeah, he hates the head straight. Good job. Ready? Good job. Yes, that was fantastic. That was fantastic. So it's not that he doesn't like it. But he thinks in his head he should be in charge of you. Mm -hmm. And when he's fighting you and you're going, good boy, good boy, then... That was a bad thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, and you notice I'm using mixed both... Mixed message. Yes, mixed message. I'm using both corrections. I'm using the ah, and I'm using the head straight. So now I'm going to try to see if he'll stand and do the ah. Good job. Stand. Very nice. Stand. Good. Head straight. Ah! Head straight. Good. 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 Yay! That was fantastic! See, that time he stood, he didn't fight me or mm -hmm. nothing. You are so handsome. You did so good. You look at that amazing expression. Yes, he's the favorite dog in the whole world. Yes, you. Ah, 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 ah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna put him on the ground. Okay. I got him in the head straight position. Head straight. There you go, yay! Okay. A lot of times people will kind of put their own little twist on it. And when they do the head straight, they'll send me video footage and see how many fingers I have on that side. That, is, that means you're not doing the head straight position properly. So it's not effective. If you have the, the right fingers exactly the way I taught you how to do this, then you should only have your forefinger on this side, your thumb on this mm -hmm. side, and these three fingers down below. That mm -hmm. gives you all the fingers in the spot where they need to be mm -hmm. to do what you need. You don't wanna squeeze this muzzle and you don't wanna put your thumb on top of that muzzle yeah. because this is just a resting zone for that muzzle right there. If you squeeze or overpower, then you are gonna create a fight with the head straight position. Okay, you have any questions so far? Not so far. Now, some other advantages to the head straight position is that it does have some more advanced positions that, come, that stem from this. One of them is where I'm gonna take my thumb and my forefinger like this, and I'm going to say head straight, head straight, and I'm just tapping on the side of the jaw. When I do this, that's gonna prepare me for getting out and free stacking with this dog. When I'm out here free stacking with this dog, if this dog starts to move and I'm six feet away from it, I can go head straight, head straight, and look at where that's touching the side of the head right there, yeah. just like I did before. Right. Okay. So what that would look like is let's say the judge is off to the side and looking at the dog from the front. I can go head straight like this. Then I would come out towards the end of this leash. And as I come out to the end of this leash, I can let this dog stand on its own and you can look at this dog. And how much nicer does that look with the dog by itself? Yeah, it looks I can also come out here get this dog's attention, you're looking at the dog, I'm looking at the dog, and if I have to, I can go head straight, head straight, and give it a correction from six feet away. Mm -hmm. Now let's say you've seen the expression, you've seen the dog, and now you want to examine the dog as the judge. I'm gonna take my right hand, just like I demonstrated with the head straight position, and I'm gonna put my leash over these two fingers. So as I start to come up here, I'm bringing my hand in and it goes right into the head straight position. Did you see how smooth mm -hmm. that was? Mm -hmm. As long as you take these two fingers, put your collar or leash over that, you can put your, your pinky on here to create a little pressure, but I'm gonna slide this forward, put my two fingers in, and now, I'm at the head straight position. With the head straight position, I can show the bite, because I have my thumb free right here. I can show side bite, side bite. I can take my two fingers, thumb and forefinger, that was normally on the side right here, and I can put them between those jaw bones, where that V groove is underneath, and I can present that headpiece. Oh, so his head is up. Yes, yeah, yeah, so the head is nice, up right there. Like a yeah. So anything that you could normally do without this, you can do, mm -hmm. but actually more improve this way. Mm -hmm. you, it's something that you do want to practice. Like for instance, when I'm doing the head straight position, whether it's a table dog or a dog on the ground, I want to take this leash and I want to just get it out of there. So it's not a factor. All I'm doing is focusing on this. And I can stack my dog, I can present my dog, I can give a tour of the parts, and when the judge starts to swing around, I switch over here to my left hand and come off to the side mm -hmm. and I can come back wherever I want for this judge to see this dog all the way out to six feet. And look at how far six well, feet is. So do you generally go that way or this way? Or it depends, just depends on my ring. On the situation. Yep. Okay. If my judge is over there, I want to kind of get out of the way. I might even come off to the side here. Yeah. I may go six feet, I may go four feet, I may go two feet. Yeah. I'm reading my judge to see how yeah. comfortable they are with yeah. that. And then as I come back in, if the judge wants to examine this dog, then I come back and I do my head straight and now I'm ready for the exam for the judge to go over my dog. Mm -hmm. Now, 
after the judge examines the dog, I may come back like this again so they can see that pretty picture. And at this point, the judge is going to say, take this dog around. And or take this dog on a down and back or a triangle or an L pattern. Whatever that pattern is, I have to get from the end of my six feet back to an acceptable level to my dog. Yeah. So if I'm, let's say I'm going to go all the way back here to six feet. Now remember what I told you before, if I have this in my left hand, which is my lead hand, yeah. I take my right hand to put some tension. And, and as long as I'm yeah. walking okay. like this, then that's an acceptable level. I say head straight, take my dog, uh -huh. put my dog on the ground, and now I have an acceptable level uh -huh. where seconds ago I had six feet of lead up. Uh -huh. As long as you're moving, nobody can really see that you're actually doing uh -huh. that okay. and fumbling with that okay. lead. So that's called lead control, something that you want to practice. Now, we're going to have you practice this, and I'm going to walk you through it. Your assignment tonight for your homework assignment is this. I want you to do the head straight position. And I want you, you can read from your standard if you want. If you've mem memorized your standard, that's good too. But I want you to describe the headpiece, the neck, the withers, top line, all the way back to the tail. Mm -hmm. So, and when you're doing this, you're going to say, the head of this particular breed is flat on the top. The length of the head from the stop to the occiput is equal length from the stop to the end of the nose. The ear set is high on this breed. So as I'm saying the words, I'm mm -hmm. actually Vanna Whiting this. I'm mm -hmm. giving you a tour of this. Yeah, yeah. And the tip of the ear reaches the outside corner of the eye. Mm -hmm. So as I'm describing this particular breed to you, I'm showing you all these parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The occiput region is noticeable mm -hmm. at go, coming into this strong neck with a visible arch, going into smooth withers, going into the loin, which has a slight rise on the loin and a gentle sloping croup. Mm -hmm. So see how I described and I yeah. pointed that stuff yeah. out? Now the reason why I want to learn how to do this is because if you verbalize, well we just did yeah, with that last assignment, learn. you're yeah. learning. And when I have the, the judge in the ring for real, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I'm still going to verbalize it in my yeah. head. And as it looks like I'm setting up this dog, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure all these parts are where they're supposed to be, but I'm giving you a tour. And you're gonna pay attention to wherever my hand is at. Because if I tell you to look at the rear of this dog, where are you looking? At the head. Right, even though I said look at the rear. Yeah. So that is something that's gonna help you later mm -hmm. on when it comes to okay. you actually doing the presentation. Okay. So your assignment tonight is to demonstrate the head straight position and talk about your breed standard with the headpiece and all the components that represent the top line.